if my king went into a cave and started talking to the dead, I would think, well, that guy's kind of crazy. Yes, you will lose the favor of the gods. Because people think you're kind of crazy. Welcome to another Total War Saga Troy stream. We're finally gonna get into some campaign gameplay. Joining me again is Milcho. Thank you for clearing up your schedule. You, you weren't originally scheduled <laughs> to be here. <laughs> uh, yeah, but still, it's nice to be here. So hopefully we can have some good gameplay. And so today we're gonna play Menelaus. Woo! Nice. Here he is, the man, the king of Sparta. He's uh, he's kind of an important character in, in the Trojan epic. Yeah, he's quite an important character in the Iliad because, uh, after all, the stealing of his wife Helen is the event that kind of leads to the war between the Achaeans and the Trojans. It is quite an interesting faction to play. We've mm. tried to make sure that all the factions in the game have uh, some unique mechanics. Right here in this screen, you can see on the right side um, the faction traits uh, for Menelaus. One of them is the Call to Arms uh, faction mechanic, which uh, actually allows him to recruit uh, units from his defensive or military allies so mm. it's really important for you to keep some alliances uh with other factions because doing so you will get access to the troops that they have in their rosters theoretically you can have the biggest roster of any uh, uh of any character in the game really exactly if you manage to ally yourself with one of the trojans for example you might even get access to some of Troy choice units mm. which is also an interesting way of playing that faction you can use this um call to arms feature anywhere on the campaign map as long as your army is in an encampment stance it doesn't need to be in your own regions you can just recruit units there yeah so the second uh, faction mechanic is the spartan colonies which allows you to um, colonize uh, settlements that have already been raised or they're not occupied at the moment by anyone even just from having them in your line of sight and knowing where the possible locations of them are this is also a unique way Menelaus can expand his territories in different places on the campaign map without actually having to move an army to that settlement um further down we can see uh, uh, some of the unique faction units uh, to Menelaus one is the Light Spear Runners. This is a very light and extremely fast unit. It's one of the fastest units, uh, in infantry units in the game. It, all, it also has a number of abilities that can be quite useful. It has a special missile attack. So these are very, very powerful units. Uh, yeah, Axe Champions are offense-oriented uh, unit, which can deal a lot of damage with their heavy axes and they're super useful on the charge if mm. you manage to get them. Fantastic. And then finally, we have the Heroic Axe Warriors. Yeah, Heroic Axe Warriors, they're pretty similar to the other Axe uh, unit that we saw, but they are more defensive oriented. They do have a shield and they're one of your best front lines that you mm. can get. They do extra damage versus Swordsmen and Spearmen as well. Yeah, very, very extra damage versus Swordsmen and Spearmen. They're pretty good. So we have uh, um, Menelaus starting here in, uh, in, in Sparta south yes, of what is today is greece location um we have troy over here we can see that priam who is not a a friendly or is, he's not a he's an unfriendly i read unfriendly and then said uh friendly instead of a player character uh you're not going to be able to play as king priam but you have uh paris of troy you got hector of troy you got uh Aenus here and you got sarpedon down here in the south i don't need the game to tell me how the game is played um, because I have someone in my ear that can tell me how the game is played. <laughs> <laughs> well, Total War veterans will find that the game plays quite similar to other Total War titles, but mm. also has a few new features. So here we have the man himself, Menelaus. Look at, oh, look at that yep. sheen. <laughs> here he is, trying to take his wife back. But first he needs to do deal with some rebels here on the southeast of him. There's a lot to talk about just on this screen, but I think we're gonna we're gonna do what every Total War campaign starts off with, which is to uh, attack someone. So we're gonna take Menelaus. It's a six-on-six -six fight against the Spartan noble pretenders here, led by Arcus. Uh, so let's just let's just do it. Let's just get into it. 
Fantastic. Um, you can see down there in the left that Menelaus himself has leveled up. As you can see here, the skill tree has changed quite a bit from oh, yeah. previous titles. Now, as you go down the tree, you will basically have um, an option between two new abilities. See, so I can pick Dread of Ares or Assault and Battery. I can't pick both. The abilities have also specializations, which can, which can be unlocked with another skill point. Mm. And the specialization will overwrite your uh, the basic ability, yeah. so you have an improved version. So if if I if I picked up Dread of Ares and wanted to specialize in having ranged units, this one would yes. reduce the missile resistance, which would be really nice. Or I can go more defensive and reduce the melee attack. I think I'm going to go with yes. Dread of Ares here. It is a good choice, but mind that uh, choosing this ability will lock mm. off the other ability, yeah. as you see right now. Each epic hero has a unique skill tree. Mm. and uh, each uh, hero also has their own yeah. uh, each hero type has their own unique skill tree so like uh, defender protector will be different than uh, fighter champion let's uh, let's recruit some units because we need, we can't have six units in our army forever so uh, this is very similar to uh, the way you do it in Total War Warhammer or Rome 2 for example we click this button and then we start recruiting now you can see that there are some icons here. Every unit has a cost, and in Total War Saga Troy, we have a brand new multiple resource economy. So let's talk about food. Well, food is going to be one of your most important resources if you want to build armies early game. Mm. This is what food is mostly utilized for. You don't really need food to build buildings and expand your settlements and so on. But in order to have armies, you do need to have food. As you can see up top, those are the units that you can recruit from the call to arms mechanic, uh, which is unique yep. to Agamemnon. These are Agamemnon's units. Yes, those are Agamemnon's ah. units because you are starting with a defensive alliance with ah. him, with Agamemnon. And so you have access to them. But as Fantastic. you can see, some of them are quite expensive oh, and yeah. most of the time you will Fancy. prefer recruiting your own units unless you want to get something more unique yeah. as the game progresses the units will start costing bronze as well mm. uh, which is another type of resource which you need to accumulate and just uh, find ways to gather this is going to be an essential part of the war troy those new resources because uh, all the settlements have uh, access to different types of resources that you can get. Here we have a, uh, a stone quarry, I guess. Um, yes. Uh, over here, we got some wood here in this forested area. Got some bronze over here. Here we have gold. Yes, gold is a special type of resource. Uh, uh, it's used in many different things, which uh, affect can affect the campaign a lot but mm. not in a direct way. It's really utilized in the Divine Wheel system, as well as yeah. some late game units, which require you go, go to pay them and so on. Yeah. It's also very useful in diplomacy because gold is finite and uh, it can run out dry on the map in the late stages of the game. And wood and stone, of course, they use to expand your settlements. Early yeah. structures will require mostly wood, but as you progress and want to build temples and better buildings, they will start requiring more and more stone. Here we can see that we could colonize. Um, well, we could have. Yes, this is a special mechanic uh, of Menelaus, uh, which allows him to colonize from a distance. Mm. It would cost us 300 wood, 500 food, and 100 stone. We don't have 500 food, so we won't do that this turn. So we have the, these mud brick houses, which increases the growth of the province. Growth contributes to uh, population surplus, which you need for your uh, primary buildings. Yes, exactly. It works in a similar way uh, as in Total War Warhammer, mm -hmm. where you need to get growth in order to expand your settlements even more and get more slots for buildings available in your settlement. So right now, your choice is basically between that growth or yeah. upgrading your other settlement so that uh, you have one of the food production buildings so you can get more food mm. to get more armies. Unfortunately, Oitilan doesn't seem to be able to support any food production. It is a stone quarry after all. Oh, it's a stone. It's a stone yeah. uh, settlement. Okay. Well, stone can be used, you can trade it for food. If you find someone that has a lot of food, but doesn't have access to stone, and as you mm. see here, you have a stone quarry, uh, yeah. you might be able to trade some of your stone for their food. 
And that's also a very good use of uh, gold, I've found, because gold is very valuable. That is true, but gold is also quite utilized in the Divine Wheel system. Mm. If you click on the button for the Divine Wheel up there on the left, yeah, you will open the panel uh, which uh, represents the different gods. Worshipping those gods uh, can give you a lot of benefits. At the start of the game, all of them are at a neglected level, which means that they do not, they do not provide you with any buffs. Mm. But if you build temples dedicated to them and you pray to them, uh, they will start winning with some really, really powerful buffs. Like you can see here with Hera, worshipping her will reduce the recruitment cost of all army units. And once we yeah. reach the level of worship, which is level three, we will get access to the Coribantis, I think is how you say that maybe, uh, unit, um, which is a, yes. a fantastic uh, mythological unit. Now, I think it's important for us to mention that this is of course part of our truth behind the myth uh, uh, setting. It's not actually the gods themselves that are giving you these bonuses. Yes, the, when the people truly believe that uh, they are, uh, they have this god respected and they have the favor of this god, mm. they are going to get those effects and they're going to start performing better, knowing that Hera is on their side. All right, so yeah. let's take a look at research or royal decrees. Yes, the royal decrees are uh, something similar to what you would call technologies in mm. the previous Total War titles. There are a lot of buffs here which you need to pay attention to. And Indeed. there are lots of ways in which you can go and decide how to better expand your uh, empire. And if you look very closely, there's a, a, an icon here that I'm not going to hover over, but you might imagine what it does. Um, so I normally uh, go with Royal Timber for my first pick. That is a smart idea, because you will be needing a lot of wood from the start. As you can see, this one requires you more time than yeah. the others. But two turns more, I guess, it's fine. So we got a mission to issue a Royal Decree, which is going to happen in six turns. Those missions are there to guide you throughout yeah. the game. Uh, they usually help you build up your army, construct some buildings, issue a royal decree and so on, just mm -hmm. so they can get you started. Um, so I'm going to pick up some more units here because we have mustered troops, which requires to have 12 units. Um, um, maybe instead of picking more units, you might try to colonize that settlement, which will ooh. give you another settlement That's there. You can either do point. it from here or from the screen uh, up there on the left, which uh, is the Spartan colonies. Ah. It will show you all the different settlements mm -hmm. that you know that right now can be colonized. And if you colonize a settlement that is far away, it might be a bit difficult for you to defend it. So we have Etis here, which is ruined. So let's uh, build up Etis. It's going to cost us all, pretty much all of the wood we have left. But we're yes, going to get more food. it is a farming village and it will provide you with lots of food so you can mm. upgrade your armies. So right now you're missing a lot of wood. Uh, maybe we should try and trade. Yeah. So maybe. you can offer your protection, for example, like a defensive alliance in exchange for some resources. Mm. Or you can try and trade some of your own resources in order to get you that early game of yours started. Achilles really wants a non-aggression non pact, so let's maybe we can get something from him because he has, he has some wood, he doesn't have a ton. Alright, so let's do 37 wood for 8 turns. If we add military access, we can get even more out of him actually. So if we add military access to it, we now get plus 18 and we can go up and get even more out of him. So we can get 74 for 8 turns instead. That sounds like a great deal. Thank you, Achilles. That is a great deal, indeed. <laughs> down there on the right you can usually see what kind of resources they have an abundance of yeah so you're looking to find a faction that has access to a lot of food let's see where is agamemnon it's mycenae yeah this yeah. is agamemnon you are already in a defensive alliance with him mm. but you might offer him mm. something else yeah like a military access or military alliance let's go with both why not um and yeah then... he is your brother he will appreciate yeah. it then we can maybe go we can also up want some food from oh, him. Look at the food we can get from it. Okay, maybe not that much. <laughs> well, <laughs> not that much. 205? Yeah, 205 for five turns, plus a military alliance. That sounds great. 
Fantastic. Keep in mind that Agamemnon will probably drag you into a war quite quickly. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so those are some of Menelaus' uh, unique buildings that you can build. Ooh, I like the plus one to they local recruitment capacity. And these are mutually exclusive building lines. Uh, they're mutually exclusive in the same settlement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you can build uh, the other building in another settlement, so that will not be a problem. You have access to several different type of food buildings. Mm. So one of them will give you some food and more food if you have uh, a good influence. What what is influence? Uh, yeah, so influence is uh, represents the amount of different tribes that are right now inhabiting your lands in this settlement. Mm. And so you can see here a breakdown of the tribes that uh, live here. So the Achaeans, which are Menelaus and Agamemnon's people, are the predominant tribe. So mm. you have 86% influence in this region. So the first bank is going to offer you some food mm. and then more food if you have better influence or so 80 food if you have influence. But the second building is going to produce you even more food, 90 Ooh. food, and yeah. some uh, has another effect of growth. Yeah, but yeah. it will reduce your influence. Yeah. And the third building, uh, you see, yep. uh, will just provide you with different uh, resource bonuses in the whole province. This is a good support type of resource. So for an example, if you want uh, to have this province produce more stone, because your other settlement produces stone here, and you don't yep. really need food, instead of building a food building here, you can do this building. And this will increase your production of stone that you had in previous settlements. Again, so the fourth building, this will provide you even more food than the oh, others. This one's good. But this building costs a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And the last building, it doesn't have any upgrades. It will provide you an immense amount of the resource, so 300 food compared mm. to the others. It's super a lot, but it doesn't have any upgrades and yeah. it significantly lowers your gold. It's already been an hour. So I'm going to do a wow. quick, uh, uh, a couple, yeah, I know time flies when, when you're having fun, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I I'm going to turn to the chat and see um, if we have any fun questions here while I continue playing. Yeah, please do that. So, um, so let's see, are them. there any monster units? Well, that depends on what you consider a monster. <laughs> yeah, so they're not really monster type of units. Uh, we do have some mythic units that are single entity, very powerful units, uh, like the Minotaur. Mm. They are really powerful yeah. and can bring a lot to the battle, but they are pretty hard to obtain in the campaign. If you check out the Divine Will uh, screen again, you can see that you can get the Minotaur by getting the, the worshipped uh, favor status of Zeus. It's not really a monster. It's a human, uh, but he is a beast of a man. I, I saw it, it was like an hour ago, but someone was asking if the heroes could die. They are invincible, the, the, the unique heroes. They, they're handled pretty much like legendary lords in Total War Warhammer, mm. whereas you can eliminate them from the map and eliminate the faction. You can kill them in this way. But yeah. epic heroes uh, will usually just be wounded in battles. So here on the traits, you can hear it, see that this one is a Homeric character on the right. Mm. And this means that this character is destined for greatness and he will be wounded in battle unless you destroy his faction. Yeah. You will kill him. Here's yes. a question I've seen many times during the stream. Um, and I... You're going to have to answer this, but I think I know the answer. Is Patroclus in the game? Yes, Patroclus is in the game, in the form you can... Oh, okay. That was actually not the answer I was uh, expecting. Because um, I thought, in the announcement cinematic, right, it opens with Achilles burning someone on a pyre. And I thought that was Patroclus. Yes, this is the cinematic, but the game starts after Helen has been abducted from Sparta. And ah. Paris arrives with her in Troy. Like when when I said that uh, uh, Achilles burned Patroclus at the beginning of the the cinematic, I realized that in the cinematic he is also fighting Hector, which is clearly not the beginning of the game. Yes. So I don't know why you don't I thought... start with fighting Hector right off as Achilles. <laughs> so here's an interesting question: We've seen uh, a bunch of different types of heroes in the battles. Are there support heroes uh, as yes, opposed to being the fighters? Warlord types of heroes, especially the mentor. 
archetype is pretty mm. much a support hero so they're not really that great in single combat but they will provide a lot of buffs and debuffs uh, to your armies depending on which support archetype you go after uh, thank you all for watching this has been great thank you milcher for clearing your schedule and coming out thank you and we will see you okay. next week i will see you next week we'll see who is here with me bye <laughs> okay bye bye